Well, welcome YouTube friends and family to today's edition of the Wellness Homesteader. So today's video is gonna be a short one, but I started working on this project and I thought, you know what, this would make a great video. So I've kind of begun my foray, if you will, into doing more firmening because of the good bacteria benefit to the gut. So let me share with you, in case you missed the earlier video, my beautiful pickling carrots, and you can see now it's starting to get bubbly. I have a pickle pipe on it, and I'll have to leave a link to the playlist below. So I was at my local farmer's market today, and they had beautiful organic grown cabbages. So let me tip you down here. I'm a little scared about my ring light. I've ordered another one, but... Um, yeah, it looks like it's about to go. I have lots of pinked up duct tape on it. So the I just have the core of the cabbage. There's several pieces. And a nice stainless steel bowl that we are going to use a stainless steel knife to cut the cabbage. And what I've done here is just quarter it. And then we're going to, and you could use a mandolin. Every time I use a mandolin, there's bleeding involved. <laughs> Um, even with the little safety guard on it. So what I've done is I washed the cabbage and I removed these, well, several outer leaves, but I also saved these big, beautiful outer leaves because that's what we're going to cover our cabbage, which will become fermented cabbage or sauerkraut with. So I am just going to quarter all of this up, put it into a bowl, and then you began to rub the cabbage with sea salt. And then any like bruised leaves, I will take off. This cabbage was really beautiful. Not much waste at all on it. So I'm gonna keep on chopping here. And let me just show you what my first efforts, you could do this as coarse or as fine as you like. Um, I'm doing it a little on the coarse side. That's kind of like core. And I love the core of a cabbage. When we were children, <laughs> that was quite the treat when my mom would cut a cabbage um, to get the core. So, you know, it's kind of looking like coleslaw in there. And it's going to get a lot smaller as we go along because we're going to be adding that salt and rubbing it in, causing the cabbage to wilt. So I will bring you back in just a moment. Okay, so the entire cabbage is now in this pretty good size stainless bowl. And I'm going to add to this to start about a tablespoon of sea salt. And then what you want to do is start massaging that salt in to the cabbage. Now this can take time, but what you should see is the cabbage should start to wilt and you should start to get quite a bit of water into the bottom of your bowl. So if you're having trouble getting water to come out of your cabbage and you feel like you've put enough salt in it, which I'm gonna put a little bit more because this was a humongous cabbage, you can actually cover it, leave it sit for 45 minutes, let that salt kind of work into it and then come back to it. And we may have to do that, although I can feel this is getting very, very wet. If you can see on my hands, and yes, my hands are clean. <laughs> and I ended up with quite a bit of core, so that will be a very delicious snack. So even if you're not a huge fan of sauerkraut, I think you might really enjoy it if you make your own homemade. It's a fun process. If you have littles, it's a great project that the littles can do because they love getting their hands dirty. And yeah, I'm gonna add another half tablespoon of salt and keep working this. And then I will bring you back to show you the wilted cabbage that is ready to be cropped and how you treat that while it's fermenting. So dust off my hands here, stay tuned. So as you can see, I've had some significant wilting here, but I'm still going to let this sit because I'm not getting a lot of water out. 
So while this sits, I want to share something kind of humorous with you. So on a previous video, and I apologize about the traffic noise, I shared with you that they are replacing a gas line, which is actually clear back as far as you can see over here. So all of this has to be dug up. But yesterday, I was blessed with a little present. They left my pine tree alone, but look what they brought me in my front yard. <laughs> a bright orange portalette. And if that isn't obnoxious enough, I'm sure you can see the colorful banner, the flag banner hanging across, and then all the lovely rock. So this year is going to be an interesting summer for sure. The cabbage has now been sitting for 45 minutes and you're probably wondering what all those little brown specks are. So personally, I like to add fennel, which is sort of a licorice taste, and then caraway, which is what you find many times in rye bread. So I have about half of the volume that I did have. I do have quite a bit of water that has come out the cabbage. So I'm going to start packing it into my crock. Now, some of you may be asking me, where did I get my lovely crock? Let me see if I can tip down without my ring light falling off. This came from Bennington Pottery. Um, I don't think it's still made, but um, they're the makers of this lovely blue agate pottery. So I've washed my hands well, I've washed the crock well. And what you want to do is put your kraut in or your cabbage in and really push it down well. You want to get as much of the air out of it as you possibly can as you work. If you are using a crock, you want four to five inches headspace at the top. If you're using a jar, you want at least a couple inches headspace. So you may have a gallon jar or half gallon jar, depending on how much you're doing. So I'm going to continue. We're getting down to the really, really liquid part. And as you can see here, quite a bit of liquid. I'm going to get all that cabbagey goodness out. Don't want to waste any of it. And one last time, give it a good compress. Now I'm going to have plenty, plenty, plenty of headspace in my crock. So this is what you're gonna have, is smash down cabbage. Not hard, right? So the next thing is with those whole cabbage leaves that you saved, you wanna go ahead and press those over the cabbage to kind of seal it. And I am gonna use several layers because I have several layers. Now, one of the things I did want to share with you all is anytime you're going to make a major change to your diet, like you're going to start adding fermented products that you're making at home, you may want to check with your physician because here's something that many people don't know about cabbage or cruciferous vegetables. When they're cooked, there is a chemical in them that gets cooked out, a natural occurring substance. Let's not call it a chemical. If it is just fermented and not cooked, that substance is not cooked out. And if you have problems with a low thyroid, you may want to check with your physician before you start eating lots of fermented cabbage. Okay, disclaimer over with. I am going to, ooh, that's a little bit small. Okay, so the next thing you want to do, I thought this fit, but um, yeah, operator error gonna have to find is something smaller. You wanna put a plate to push it down and then over top of that to hold it down, I am going to put a jar of, it's just a pint jar of water with a lid on it. So that will keep everything pressed down. So let me go find a different lid, I'm sorry, yeah, a different lid. And then I will bring you back to show you and talk to you about the next step. Necessity is the mother of invention. So I found a crock lid that is going to work. What you're aiming to do is cover as much of the inside as you possibly can. And hey, my jar fits on there perfectly. 
So now I'm going, I put it inside of a bowl. Um, in case we have any oop over, I highly doubt I will because the kraut is only about halfway up the crock. And then I'm going to put it in a cool, dark place and I'll start tasting this at about day 14. So when it loses that vinegary taste and tastes like sauerkraut, then I'll know it's ready. Then you can pack it into jars, uh, not canning it, but it will stay good in the refrigerator for up to a year. So this head of cabbage will feed me as a little side dish for many meals to come. So if you have some cabbages hanging around in your garden, or if you see some great buys on cabbage at your local farmer's market, I encourage you to pick one up and try this method out. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you haven't already, go ahead and smash that like button. And as always, be healthy, be well, be blessed, and I'll see you all very soon. Take care.